Well, welcome to the second installment of Talking Derby. And once again, I'm joined by a couple of colleagues from around the country. Uh, Mystic Mertz, not with us here this week. Instead, we have, uh, well, I don't know how we're going to call him, Gorgeous George, perhaps, down in the West. George, how are you doing? How is everything treating you down in Galway? Uh, everything is treating us well, Ian. You know, unfortunately, we're still behind closed doors, as everybody knows. But we've seen some pretty good grade of performance. <clears throat> an impressive uh, newcomer on Friday night, Magic and Soraya in Galway. And uh, coming up for the Puppy Derby, there's lots of people in Galway who uh, want to watch the progress of Miss Joss, uh, owned by the Mullins Curtain Syndicate, who had derby finalists in the past, and great supporters of the Graham, and great, great Graham people, Ian. And uh, you know, the likes of Ali Curtin and Noel Mullins are known the length and breadth of the country. And it'll be certainly great to see them have a very good bitch, and uh, let's hope she goes well. Yeah, some famous names down, of course, in the West. Um, unfortunately, one of the, the sole, the sole uh, Raiders from the West went crashing out on Saturday night in the Derby, uh, Frankie's Jet, but he ran very well for, for the first three rounds, no question about it. There's no doubt about that, Ian. He ran very, very well. I mean, when he was beating his debut in Galway and uh, then put the, his second race, put the race really to bed quite early. Uh, done very well. Brian, I know Brian Johnson was delighted uh, to get that far and. The beauty is that he, he bred, the, bred the dog himself, you know, and litter comrade had won in Galway as well uh, two weeks ago. Uh, good supporter of the game, Brian, breeds some of his own, trains a fair few dogs. And uh, it's great to see, you know, people having a bit of success to just the pure love of the game. And sometimes numbers isn't everything. It's just if you get that one good enough to go at the highest echelons of the sport, it's fantastic for the people. And it gives great encouragement to his friends as well and people involved in his training operation. Of course, of course. And Tommy Lyons joined us down from, from Yall in County Cork. Tommy, uh, not too many Cork dogs left, I'm afraid. It's more of the Kerry contingent, but how are things down in Yall going? Uh, things are quite good, Ian. Um, the amount of work, and I, and I can't, I mean, I know around the, around the country it's the exact same situation with the people behind, behind the scenes, but there are individuals behind the scenes in Yall that are doing the most incredible work at the moment, and they have done for six or eight months a year, really, and they've been doing it consistently with the track supporters club for years, but in, particularly over the last while to, to ensure the future of, of you all. I mean, the work is just phenomenal. Now, there won't be familiar names to most people around the country, not yet, and, and in the fullness of time, I think they will be recognised to some degree, but um, what they have been doing for you all is phenomenal. Now, the key, one of the key things with you all, um, the Tax Sports Club over the years has asked for a subscription kind of, you know, from people to be included in the lot of draw, and that has come from all over the country. So that's key. Now, the support from, from Greyhound folk from every corner of Ireland has been has been key to success, but it looks like we've secured the the, the next couple of years with y'all, and please God, long beyond it. But as I said to you, the work being done though, it's just not simple. It is just phenomenal. George mentioned there, we're talking about the last one going and, and the love of the game. If you want to see it come down. I surely will. I'll definitely make a point of it. Listen, lads, it is called Talking Derby. We're going to start on the Derby action. Uh, 24 became 23 on, on Friday. Um, of course, Waikiki Kino was an absentee, picked up an injury. A terrible disappointment for his connections, but we had 23 magnificent greyhounds going in action on Saturday night at Shelburne Park. And we saw four tremendous performances in the uh, Derby quarterfinals, of course, three from the front and Another race, which was well, certainly worth a mention, Kilara Eichern getting up at the final stride. It was one of the most incredible races I've seen at Shelburne Park in, in recent years. But all in all, it's been a, a great derby. and um, We're thoroughly enjoying it, I'd imagine. I'll start with you, Tommy. Yeah, yeah there, were, there were remarkable heats in, in, in some ways. Obviously, that, the fact that Bally McWild popped out and made all, that's just, he, he, he's, just, you know, he, he's just telling us what he is and what he's capable of. There wasn't a great surprise to the results. I mean, he's, he's just a dog that's developing. The Kalara Icon race, can't get my head around it. I can't, I just can't figure it out properly. I think, you know, Glengar Bale, you know, toolmaker Sydney showed phenomenal pace to, to, to go by him as if he was almost stopped going down the back. That was just, just ridiculous pace from toolmaker Sydney. Then he bumped and with the leader and then Glengar Bale had a chance and Kalara Icon came. Great race. I mean, if it was all straightforward and the four favourites went and won and popped out and made all, he'd be... Be a bit, it might be a little bit boring. Pastana is the things. sponsors might be back next year, to be honest. They might have taken <laughs> a few days. Okay. They, they, don't, don't worry about that. I mean, they'll get their days, plenty of days. Pastana is doing things that we have never seen a Greyhound doing before. The clocks he is producing on a weekly basis. Now, I have a slight concern, and we, we, might, we might touch on this because I don't know, I don't know whether you, you think the same. Pastana always swings wide into the straight. That's always. But he was wider than ever the last day, I felt. Just looking at it, I thought he swung a lot wider. Is that the tire? Is that the sign of dogs getting tired after you know four big runs? He ran two good races, the champion stakes. 
Um, there's two more rounds of the derby to go. You know, I just wonder, is it the time? The time is then there. The clock suggests no, 29.07 is ridiculous. I mean, to, to be doing these sort of times four weeks in a row. And then we had Newin Taylor, who, who actually rolled a bump at the first bend, or at the first bend, at the boxes. Uh, his own, his own uh, kennel companion, Newin Lester, bumped him early. Uh, I thought he ran a superb race. Again, sections suggest that he's, he's not quite getting home. But I wonder if you're doing 29.19 every night, do you really have to get home? Um, the one that interests me most was Bastan. He Is there something to read from that? Bally McCooper wasn't making any ground on him in the closing stages. We have to point that out. So maybe I'm, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm, I'm clutching at straws. I want him to win because I want a dog that's done those four times. Imagine the dog went through the derby, not going, let, not, not going any bigger than what, 29, what, 19, 20, whatever he's doing. His worst, his worst, his worst time is like, it's quite phenomenal. This, this is stuff we've never, ever seen from a greyhound before, ever. Make no mistake. George, I'd imagine you have a similar enough take. Uh, what, what caught your eye on Saturday night? Well, what caught my eye, I'd have to take Tommy's point there. I agree with him with Pestana. He did swing wide off the home bending. It's something you, you go over the years and, you know, you were all a long time around the place and watching racing and it's competition. It's five, six weeks. When competitions, it's all about getting to the latter stages. Now we have 12. When we get to the final, no one will be worried whether a dog is unbeaten or not. It's all about the best dog and a dog that can withstand. It's a huge ask for both dog and handler, in my opinion, always, to bring a dog to the peak consistently for what we really call a six-week period. And for a dog like Pastana to be doing it every week, you know, I, I take Tommy's point really well that, that he did swing off the final bin. We don't know, but uh, he's been a very, very impressive. But the, what had to take my end, uh, like I watch the racing live at the track, but I just have a fleeting glance of it when I'm working. It, I watch it a lot when I get home, and mostly Sundays I really sit down and watch it. And the pace of Toolmaker Sydney was, my God, down the back straight, was just phenomenal, really. And that was an intriguing race. I know what happened was a little bit of, you know, a bit of trouble at the third bend, but it really showed the pace that that dog has. And but for the few injuries he has, and Robert Leeson has been there before, and you know. It's just about, can he just get this dog? The pace he showed. I was really impressed myself personally with the performance, most probably of you in Taylor, in the fact that there's, with the, the amount of wide seated runners left, he's nearly guaranteed the outside. And maybe, maybe in the final, you know, you look at the semi final draw, Pestana will head straight for the rail, but in a Boyle Sports extra inside him, could, you don't know. But I really was, I think, you know, you have to, to hand it to Owen McKenna. Pestana has been consistently brilliant. And I love when you talk in your commentary, when you hit the third bend sections. And I think, you know, that just shows you how consistent the dog is. He is the one to beat. But I still think any of the 12, depending on which way the race, the races develop, could still conceivably win the derby. Pestana is a worthy favourite. But you and Taylor, definitely for me, I was a, I was a Glengar Bale man very early on. Still nothing wrong. But Bally McWilds does one thing for me, Ian. Goes up in a straight line. And that could be crucial on the run to the main. No matter where he's drawn, he tends to go up in a straight line. And I think that could be crucial. Yeah, you speak there of consistency. It's not something that you normally throw at derby winners, although it is often the case with derby winners. It's, mm -hmm. it's more that you, show, you throw brilliance, you throw a little bit of luck, you throw um, dominance. But consistency is... is um, it, it's often a much maligned term, but... In the terms of a racing greyhound, you know, they don't get much more consistent than Pastana, like allied with the brilliance, the, the sheer professionalism. And as you said, like his, his four third bend sectionals thus far, 1701, which is positively pedestrian for his standards, 1683, 1690 and 1690. He's done uh, two 332s and a 338 on Saturday night. So, yeah, he's clearly a, a greyhound that's absolutely at the peak of his powers, a peak of form. And um, as regards running off the final turn, lads, Obviously, we haven't been able to study it from, from that, with that amount of scrutiny in a sense where you couldn't even see the hair off the final turn. But who's to say the hair wasn't just that two or three yards closer than normal and perhaps he's coursing the hair. The fact of the matter is he still does 29.07. So he does a 16.90 last week doing 29.15 and this week he does a 16 or 16.90 doing a 29.07. So is it, is it just a case of Maybe he was just carrying such speed into the home straight, maybe coursing the hair a fraction. Maybe that's the case. Are we just picking holes? I would say his section, his section was, uh, early section was being so consistent, his third bender sprint box section was being so consistent, 
Um, that would suggest to me that the hair was exactly where it was in the previous rounds, um, in the sense that he's doing nothing different to that point. Now look at this is marginal stuff. He always swings off the off the bend, maybe usually middle if you ask me, and then and then goes in again on, on the straight to, to, towards the line. He goes back in towards the rails. Um, I don't know. I, so I was just looking up there, sorry, 29 21 was his warm up. That was his first round, he like, and that was his worst time. That's but he left, he effectively left 10 spots at the, at the um, traps there that night because he only did a 343. And by his standards, like that's an absolute com- completely missed kick. Yeah, but they, 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 this is why I want him to win. I have absolutely no financial involvement in this whatsoever. But like, I mean, you'd love to see him do another 29 10 and another 29 seconds on Derby finalized and say, say, that was almost the perfect Derby. The perfect derby by a greyhound. He's that close to doing it. It's look at all McKenna's been around, he's won derbies. Most of the trainers who are left, or a number of the trainers who are left, have won derbies. They know what they're doing. Hopefully, what will happen is Bastana, he, he, if he keeps doing the 330 something splits, it probably doesn't matter too much where he's drawn because he'll lead most of the greyhounds in, in the derby. He's going to be inside New and Taylor. New and Taylor is a seed, as we is, said. Is but, New and Taylor potentially the only dog that can lead him off a level start? Off a level start, New and Taylor, I don't think leads them. I think they go up neck and neck. New and Taylor might be a head or a neck in front, but it's not enough to get around them. You've got to get a link somewhere. You've got to get in front of the dog somewhere. I don't see where that's going to happen. Now, look at uh, something tiny, you falter tiny, tiny bit of something. That, that, that could be the margin in, in the Derby final. And wouldn't it be fantastic if, if, it, if it came down to that, that we had the two dogs against each other? They avoid each other in the semi final. Now, hey. We're, hey, well, you don't have to commentate. We're, we're being, <laughs> yeah, we're being, a little, we're being a little bit cheeky talking about concentrating on the two greyhounds when, when, you, when you think that you have your ballet match there and you have other fantastic greyhounds in the derby. We'll, so. we'll get to them yet. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Jo- yeah. George, um, like of the ones that are, are, are there sitting behind Les Pastana and even you can refer to New and Taylor if you wish, is there, is there a main danger or is Pastana his greatest threat to himself? I think the draw could be the biggest threat to him, Ian. We can take it that he should make the final. And it's like I keep saying, it's, it's, you know, to get to the final is the main thing. We all, everybody wants to see the best Greyhound win the Derby. There's no doubting that Pastana has, performance-wise, has been the best dog in the Derby by far. He's consistent, as Tommy says. Everything is consistent about him. I think the point about swinging off the, the last spin, we're probably looking to see is there any way we can find a negative. But... You got to, to credit Owen McKenna. This dog has been superb in every round of the competition. It's all about keeping him ticking over for the final. What are we now? We have 15, 14, 13 days, you know, that everything goes right now on Saturday week. But he has to get to the final as well. I think he's the only danger to him could be the draw if there's something at all gets a nudge to him. You and Taylor, you know, people have thought about his stamina early on in the competition. He's certainly done nothing wrong the last night. And if he stays out there, but again, I go back. To Bally McWild, if he's outside Pastana, he will stay, my view, looking at him throughout the competition. He seems to run in a straight line. And that can be, when you're a middle to rail dog, that's a very, very important issue. Yeah, I think, also, I think he's more middle than to rail, shall we say. He yes, definitely wants yeah. trap three. As you yes. say yourself, he'll go up reasonably straight from trap one. But when he gets the chance, he'll move to the middle, he, off the second or down the back. Or. The night he was in trap one, he actually kind of took the bend in it, let's say, a trap two lane. Mm. It's, you know, he just edged that up, that little bit out, but he has that plenty of stamina as well. He it, the draw, the draw is going to be crucial, but there's no doubt he was left. I think Pastana is the fastest greyhound, in, in obviously by by the clock, but he's also the most consistent. And you know, it'll be marvelous to see a great greyhound win the, the Derby. Uh, I keep saying the pity is that the fact that we've no crowds, and that could be something come final night and even semi final mm. night. That traditional roar. That has often cost a dog at the trap. We see it in horse racing with a horse called Patash. He's carried all before him because there's no crowds there. He goes just he goes a little bit off the rails when there's a crowd there. But that derby roar, that'll be probably, you know, that huge derby roar will be missing. And that is another factor we have to uh, contend with, I think. And I just think that with a dog that traps so well and shows such blinding paces for Stanley, it's probably another aid to his cause. Now, we're going to look back at something we didn't really refer to last week. and It was that there were a number of dogs charging traps. Now, fast forward a week, and uh, I know I made a conscious effort myself in commentary, maybe just to cut off the commentary that second or two earlier before the hair came to the boxes. I was worried that maybe it was something I was doing. Or, because there's so little other noise around the stadium, I, I felt maybe that the noise was reverberating around and causing dogs to charge traps. It was very notable on Saturday night that all four heats, at least one dog, took a flyer from boxes. 
You know, in the opening heat, Ballymac Wilds got as good a start as he gets. In the second heat, New In Sheedy, the very unfortunate, and you'd have to feel for his connections, New In Sheedy, um, took a flyer from trap four. You know, in the third heat, of course, we, we saw Pastana doing what he did. But Deirdre Sydney also hit the lid, but then dived straight inwards. And in the final heat, New In Taylor flew out, as Tommy alluded to earlier on, took a slight glance, maybe took a check stride, but he did fly from boxes. Was there a reason for it last week? Or was it just one of those things? Dogs excited, um, men at the end of the lead had them really ramped up. Could be down to the fact that, Ian, as you say, the lack of noise in the stadium. You you probably got a, a couple of individual voices. The owners are, are not the owners. The trainers are there, or the handlers are there. But it could also be the fact that there's so little noise that the hearing the hair from a bit further out. It's something. To say. I mean, I mean, look, I don't think we're going to get inside the heads of the dogs at this stage. It was peculiar the week before last, or last Saturday week, it was peculiar. There were an awful lot of dogs uh, trapped. Fortunately, it didn't affect in terms of the quality of the way that, that qualified. I don't think there were too many hard luck stories in some ways. Um, but yeah, I, 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 look, we're not going to get inside the heads of the dogs. I don't know. I don't know. But I mean, I, I don't think it's your commentary. And I don't think it's the individual screaming from the track. It's just, it's just an unusual situation for the Greyhounds. And thankfully, last Saturday night, there didn't seem to be too much of an issue. I would honestly think, uh, I would agree with Tommy, the majority, but it was we know lads as commentators as well. There's nobody, there's no, none of us that have had, at some stage, some owner coming up and say, you're talking too close to the traps or whatever. You know, and we have to take that on board. It's, we're only doing a job. But I think the din and, and the eerie din of the fact that there's no crow there might be the cause of it. Certainly nothing to do with the commentary, in, in my opinion, of yours, but just... That dim, that it's it's that eerie silence, lads. We can all hear, depending on the tracks you're commentating on. You're very high up as regards geography in the stadium. You can hear the echo coming back at you. It's very dim. Whereas when there's a crowd below you, it, it bounces back off it. But I think the dogs, you know, there's, there's Tommy says the handlers are open, encourage them out, they're revved up as they put them into the traps. But there's there's no there's no that roar. There's no one tell me that in the derby and in the high quality races that there isn't a roar from the crowd there's people there having a good time they give a shout they're hoping their selection gets out but now it's very very dim and I think that might be just the reason that the dogs are just charging the traps that they're as Tommy said they're hearing the, the, the hair coming let's say from roughly we'll say 10 to 15 yards further back than they normally would and I think that could be a, a mitigating factor Maybe we'll have to do like the Premier League Let's do like the Premier League and have a crowd noise for the Derby final. <laughs> we'll pump yeah, it we, in. We get some sound from Sha Tin or somewhere in, in Hong Kong or somewhere <laughs> that and pipe that in. Yeah. Hopefully not when the favourites hit in the front because they go crazy over there. Um, I'm just going to look back at the, or I look through the Bullsports Derby semi-final. I noticed that in the opening semi-final, um, big part in the second semi-final, all six handlers, all six handlers, of course, um, they've all won a Derby. Yeah. You know, it's obviously a case of they've all been there, done that. Um, the opening semi-final is a slightly different scenario. We have Robert Gleeson, who has his, his second runner, toolmaker Sydney, Bally Mac Cooper, Newin Taylor, of course, Liam Dowling and Graham Holland, all Derby winners themselves. themselves. Um, Bally Mac uh, Matt was the winner for Liam Dowling, of course, and Graham Holland, of course, last year with Lenton Baku in rural Hawaii. But I see, you know, Thomas Boogie's there, Michael Core is there, and Jennifer O'Donnell, you could nearly lob her into the Derby winning the Derby yeah. winning uh, scenario because well she's like a baby dolphin like she came out swimming you know what I mean like it's yeah. not off the ground she's, yeah. she's obviously from one of the, the most legendary kennels in the history of greyhound racing both her, her father and mother of course are Derby winners and Jennifer and um, while Scooby Princess is a big enough price to, to win a Derby it's not it, it, if she doesn't win a Derby it's not going to be Jennifer's fault um, will it make a big difference going forward that these men have all been here uh, all done that um, because it, yeah it's all men that we have basically except Obviously, Jennifer O'Donnell, not a derby winner herself, but she has that experience. But will it make a difference going forward? It, it does make a difference to some degree because, you know, you know, um, you, you, you might look at your greyhound and see was beaten in the quarter final, and you might say, well, what can I do? Do I need to go another length or too fast? You might be looking over analysing it. Really and truly, as a trainer, the only thing you can do is keep that dog fit and well and, and, and relaxed, not getting overexcited during the week, not going getting overexcited coming close to the... To the, uh, to the to the race itself. I mean, it, maybe that's maybe that is down to experience. You'd hope you'd hope you'd like to see somebody new in the final, somebody that might have a chance. That if you know if things happen, we have had big prize winners at the Derby final uh, in in the not too distant past. Um, you'd like to see them in there, but it's just a, the key is yeah, the, the trainers have been there. I mean, if you're a betting person, 
you're more likely to side with a trainer who's been there and done it before. You know that they won't get over excited about it. I mean, I've talked about I've talked about uh, new in Taylor and saying that I don't think he quite gets home, which I think this, but, but, but like at the height of respect for what Graham Holland's able to achieve on an annual basis. So I mean, I mean, if he gets him there in peak condition and gets him out doing a three thirty something split, maybe he will win a derby. Um, I actually there's a dog that I really like. It'd be what you're saying is it'd be no shock that if he got there in derby final and Ewan Taylor did his best run of the derby, even though it was his sixth but, run in the derby. Hundred percent correct. That's exactly what I'm saying. Is is, is you know that Graham Holland has been there and done it, and and, and Liam Dowling has been there and done it. All McKenna, they've all been there and done it. Paul Hennessy, um, actually the one Greyhound I think we we don't doesn't get very much mention, but I, a Greyhound that I like a lot is in the satchel for a dog with, with with so little experience coming into Derby. He's been running phenomenally well. Um, uh, if I was being really really cheeky, I'd like um, if one of the early pacers came out the weekend. It might just mean they might turn up in Curraheen in a couple of weeks' time for the Laurels. So <laughs> I'm, I'm being greedy. I'd like to, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see them. Can you imagine what Pastan and our new Taylor could do in Curraheen Park? Yeah, it'd be pretty electric. George, your take on it? My take on it is yes. Whilst those that have been successful in the past, obviously, but you you got to realise here as well as with the the twelve the, the handlers of the twelve dogs we have left, some with multiple interests, all have that. Huge experience. And you talk about Jennifer O'Donnell, but as you say, Ian, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's these people are used to handling high quality greyhounds. They, all they have to do now is just nurture them for the last two weeks. What they this is the tough week. I always find, you know, I've been friendly, my great friend PJ Fahey, I always think that we we talk about various things. You look at the, the way the, the competition is set up, the semi-final is the really it's the hard week. Because all you really need to do is in the first, you've got to get to the final. The, you know, there's no point in being having the best dog in the competition and blowing everybody away. The worst place to finish anywhere is fourth in the semi final because you're worried about what might have been. I think there's a lot of pressure on handlers in, in, in a nice way in the fact that they've got to the semi final. All they want now is to get their charges to the final. Tommy makes a great point about Inda Satchel. This dog is certainly, you know, for so little experience, is really, really shining. And again, I'm really looking forward to the semi-finals because it's the unpredictability of the predictability, should I say, of the semi-final. It's a long competition. All the around. it's you know, the best dogs generally come to the fore. There's always hard luck stories in the early rounds, but now we have twelve dogs left. Everybody is talking about Pestana. If there was bookmakers there, they want to find a way. Can they get him beaten? The punters want to see him win. I still think Newman Taylor, oh, the fact that he could, the possibility to be drawn either five or six, if he gets over this weekend, will have that freedom. People are, you know, wondering about his stamina, but if you're in front, you're there to be shot at, and if you lead down the back straight in the derby and you're beaten, my honest view is you are beaten by a better dog. So there's no well, excuse. Fair enough. That's fair enough. Um, <clears throat> one thing I wanted to touch on there, uh, just as you were saying it, beg your pardon, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, um, looking ahead to the Derby semi-finals, you may you sort of intimated yourself there, George. You know they say a greyhounds can feel the nerves coming down a lead. And um, are they far more likely to feel that this week than next week? Next week is a let's say if they, they are in the final six, you get a free ride in the sense where you know you've done the hard work. And now it's a case of well, sure, listen, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. I suppose the the only um, maybe difference to that would be if you did have a red hot favourite where the pressure would be on that handler. Most definitely, the pressure would be seriously on the handler. And I suppose if we go to form, if we go to clock, that pressure we're saying at the moment will most likely be on Owen McKenna in next Saturday week. But he's well used to pressure and he'll be able to handle it. But again, I keep saying you get to the semi final, you get over the semi final, you get into the final. Then you've got to make that decision as the trainer, as the handler. Do you just keep the dog ticking over? Or what, what way do you approach the final week? This is the big week. You want to have that dog 110% right. If you don't have the dog 110% right going into the final, there is no point in being there. You really have to be on your game. It's, it's, wonder, it's a wonderful time for Greyhound Racing. I keep saying it, unfortunately, the huge crowds that we would expect it are not going to be there. But those people tune in online and watching on our PG, the TV channel uh, in the UK, the Racing Post TV channel, those of us watching on Barking Bus, those of us in other stadiums that are working, watching the race. We're watching with bated breath, really. We love this time of the competition. We love greyhound racing, but we also love to see the top class 
like me personally, I get every bit as kick of watching an A9 dog winning as I do see in a derby winner because the person who has prepared that dog is doing the, the level best to get the best out of their greyhound. But to me, it's the pinnacle of our sport. And Tommy says he's, you know, he's looking forward to the laurels when some of the all ends come to the laurels. That's natural. But let nobody tell you the one they all want to win is the Irish Greyhound Derby. And the people involved in the final 12 runners are, are thinking that way. If Pestana wins, we, it will be tremendous for the sport because my view is he's the first dog to dip below the 29 seconds. That's been a magical barrier. Your commentary on the night, Ian, at the pickup said, we've seen the track record and the first dog ever to go under 29 seconds. And what an advertisement that will be for our sport if he goes on with the consistency and actually lifts the prize. I think marketability-wise, that is, would be marvellous for the sport because the fastest dog, the dog that made history, lifted the prize, the ultimate prize. I suppose that's what you're looking for, is the fastest dog, the best dog to come through. Now, whether he is the best dog or not, we'll find out in a couple of weeks' time, or we might even find out this weekend. Um, looking ahead, lads, we are going to take a, a brief look at these two semifinals. I'm going to put you on the spot. Tommy, how do you see the opening semifinal going? The opening semifinal, <clears throat> I think it's set up for New England Taylor. Um, Bally McCooper is in, in five. He's used to being in six. He, um, he wouldn't have the early pace of New England Taylor. Um, I think it's an ideal setup. I can't see any of the ones on the inside um, worrying New and Taylor going to the bend. I think he gets a solo. I mean, look, at if he misses a beat at the break or a little bit of a bump with Bally McCooper, he might be in trouble because Bally McCooper is a, is a tremendously fast dog. 29-21 last week, I can tell you that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, think, I, think, I, I, I think connections of New and Taylor, look at that, he would be delighted. They'll think, wow. They may be delighted, but I think the one dog they probably wouldn't want to face, obviously apart from Pastana, is perhaps Toolmaker Sydney. Am I right in saying that? Like, especially a week after suffering uh, so badly with New In Sheedy, you know, Toolmaker Sydney is perhaps the one greyhound in the derby that could pick up New In Taylor down the back straight. Um, yes, but he's not breaking well enough. He, I mean, he has to clear or avoid or find a way by the three dogs on the inside. Now, they're not all going to be in front of him going to the bend, but he's just not breaking at the moment. Now, Robert Gleeson might be able to get, you know, he's, he's very inexperienced again. He's a dog that maybe he will improve it. You know, he has that little bit of scope to improve it there in that department. I would be worried back in him if I was back in him. Yes, I know he has the pace. I mean, we saw phenomenal stuff from him last week down the back. But I just wonder, I just wonder, can he be close enough? I doubt it. I really doubt it. He has to show something that I haven't seen in the last couple of runs. Right, give me your one, two, three, Tommy. I would, well, New England Taylor wins it. Uh, the two and three is difficult. I'd, ho I'd hope that maybe six, four, three. I, 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 I like Bally McCooper. I did put him up last week as an each way bet. I think the draw is quite tricky for him. I just don't know where he's going to be with New England Taylor in front of him. Uh, I'd like to see him qualify. Maybe it's a six, four, three, six, six, four, five. Um, it's that way for me. Scooby Princess, of course, one of the two bitches remaining. Herself and me and Miracle basically have a, a straight head to head to see which one becomes the last remaining bitch or the bitch that went furthest and, and picks up a 1500 euro bonus. Uh, George, how is your view of the opening semi final? The opening semi final, I think Ewan Taylor has been doing it right for the last couple of weeks. I think he will lead up on the outside. The pace of Toolmaker Sydney down the back straight. If he was within a length or two lengths of him, a length and a half of him, let's say, turning down the back. And if Toolmaker Sydney could hit the front before the third bend, he's had a few niggly injuries and got around, it doesn't know what he'll do. But for me, it would be a six, you and Taylor to lead home Toolmaker Sydney and possibly number two, meaning Miracle. Who yeah, she ran, a, she ran a blinder the other night. Unbelievable. Mike before. Yeah, and obviously, yeah. obviously a kennel in form. He obviously, you know, we spoke of, of the youngster he produced um, last Saturday week, Dunham Noel up in Drumbo Park, broke the mm -hmm. track record on his racing debut. But Michael Corr, clearly a man uh, in flying form, but clearly also a man that can really train a racing greyhound. Mina Miracle, what she did last week, well, she lived up to her name because it was a miraculous run. She was only fifth down the back straight and passed the likes of great name. That to even qualify was a big deal, but to finish second was remarkable. She's only four lengths behind mm -hmm. Bally McWild with the run she got. A big, big run. Um, obviously, I'm going to give mention to Thomas Boogie there as well. Catch me flying, well housed in the rent on the fence. Gave him a bit of a rest after the um, second round. Felt he was a bit flat. He ran much better last week. He's only beaten four lengths in 29.07. He's doing 29.37 himself. Just don't be surprised if he gets involved. On to the second semi-final, lads. We are, we're short enough on time. So, Tommy, just uh, what do you think is going to happen in the second semi? I hope um, this, what happened is what's happened in the last few weeks. Pasana will pop out. Uh, clear boil sports extra, because that is the key to the race for Pasana. Clear boil sports extra early. I think you do it. 
I think the section will show that he'll do it. I think he has he he has a way of getting to the bend in front. He's just he's just brilliantly consistent. The places are difficult here. Places are really difficult. Uh, I was a little bit disappointed with Glengar Glengar Bale on Saturday night. Uh, I know he has the pace, but I just wonder now: um, can he clear Bally McWilliams? He possibly can. Um, he'd have to do that because otherwise he's in trouble in the satchel. I'd like to see that dog qualify. I think he has phenomenal finishing pace too. So I'm going to go for Pastana to win it clearly. Uh, I think Bally McWilliams three five four. I think maybe unless Glengar Bale can can clear Bally McWilliams quickly, he could be in a spot of bother. George. Yeah, Glengar Bale will be in, in trouble if he can't uh, clear Bally McWhile. Pastana, it's all about Pastana getting out, getting ahead of Boyle Sports Extra. Uh, Pastana and Bally McWhile will go through where the third qualifying position could go for it in the satchel, a young dog. But you have to give mention to Boyle Sports Extra. It'll be wonderful to see the race sponsor have a runner on finals night. It's great to see people supporting the game. And that's heart ruling the head, maybe. But I put Pastana, Bally McWild, and I will let the heart rule the head in because he'll be very good for the sport. And great to see a man putting in so much into the game and getting his reward. It's not about winning. If he gets run to the final, I think John Boyle will be hugely thrilled. Yeah, I fully agree with you, George. I think it would be great to see Boyle Sports extra there, of course. John Boyle had the runner up last year. Boyle Sports King yep. went so desperately close. Yep. Very different type of Greyhound Boyle Sports extra. He's been there, done that. He's a lot more age and experience than Boyle Sports King has. And a very different running style. A flying starter um, will look to get the defence, whereas Boyle Sports King is a slow starter, stayed wide and finished like an absolute train. It really is a cracking contest, this opening semi or this second semi final. Mm. It would be fitting of any derby final itself. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise, sorry George, it wouldn't be the biggest surprise in the world if Pastana didn't qualify, but I don't even want to say those words because I want to see him there. But it just wouldn't because you can't afford it. You've got Glengar Bale who has the great middle pace, you've got Bally McWild who starts and stays, you've got Inda Satchel who flies home, Kilara Icon, Icon who absolutely hammers home. I mean, you can't afford to make a mistake early. Pastana has to do it right. I mean, that, we talked about the pressure earlier on and, and that, and I don't think Owen McKenna is a man that's going to feel too much pressure at this stage of his career and what he's achieved. But like Pastana is, is, is the, the first 25 yards are, are, are complete, are everything to Pastana this weekend. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, probably, they probably are. And if anything, lads, this second semi final is really is worthy of being a derby final. Mm. The quality of even, there's so many anomalies to it. Barry McWild comes out of wide, Glen Garbale's got to hit him. Can Pastana do what he's been doing all along? And what happens if the stand is challenged down the back, how he responds? It's an intriguing semi-final. Tommy, I'm wondering if you've opened Pestana and goes out because you want to see him come to Cork. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I want him to win, George. That's it. I, I think I've been, I've been open enough about that. I just yeah. want to, I'd love to see him dip under 20, 29, 20 again and win and do the same in the final. And we can talk about this remarkable greyhound. Yeah, I, I just think that it's all about consistency. And if he does it, look, We'll be toasting them, and it, it, it's 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 wonderful. But this this semi final is an intriguing contest. There's so many imponderables to it, rather than the the, the first semi final. But yeah. I think it'll be there will be two cracking contests, lads, and let's hope that we get the six dogs into the final that were worthy of the game, which which they will be. But well, I'm just looking. I'm just looking at both your your six selections, and you both feel that you and Taylor will get trapped six in the final because neither of you have gone yeah. to Cooper to qualify. So he looks guaranteed to get the stripes. If if you're right, um, I'm sure Liam Dowling is hoping you're not right, but um, we'll see. Uh, just just one more last point before we finish it up here. Um, is form outside of the derby taken into account? Like obviously we have kennels here that are really firing on all cylinders. I take Robert Gleeson. As, as an example, on Saturday night, he drew his curio who really lit up Waterford with a track record breaking his play, dipping under 28 seconds. Like, obviously, his kennel just at peak form at present. It's a confidence. I tell you, if, you, if you're Robert Leeson, it's definitely a confidence booster to you that you, you're going into the semi finals absolutely thinking, I'm going to qualify. My dogs are going to qualify here because they're running that well. You know, you, you, you definitely think you have a chance. Um, Juby Curio was fantastic. I mean, she's only been beaten once. She looks at an absolute star. Um, I know she'll have tougher tasks ahead and, and, and whatever. She's but, going to the Oaks now. She's not going to the Laurels, you know that. Nah. <laughs> just, the, the, you know, she could get the bones from being the bitch to go first in the Laurels too. <laughs> wish, wish sure. thing, wish thing. Right. Yeah, look at Ian, it's about confidence. I mean, Robert Leeson knows that the dogs are running phenomenally well. The only thing with dogs is they can, they can pop in and out of form very quickly. You don't take anything for granted. This is a Derby semi-final. The two Derby semi-finals, he has chances in them. Um, Will you get will you get the dog into the next round? Possibly will. Ian, you didn't give us your three for the each of the semi finals. Ah, you're right. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm afraid it's tread on toes at this stage in the derby. Uh, I think obviously New and Taylor would be hard enough to beat in the opening semi final. He'll be in front, so if if he happened to get picked up, um, you know he'll still be in the final as far as I'm concerned. And um, I I tend to agree with you, Toomaker Sydney. Not an awful lot of early speed up his inside, so he could turn closer to normal. And um, I, I maybe just going to stick with Bally Mac Cooper to be to be in the qualifying places. I know how fast this greyhound is. And in the second heat, I too would like to see Boyle's Force extra in the final. I've got to go with Pastana. And then it's a, it really is a race for, for the third qualifying spot as far as I'm concerned. Kalara Icon in the satchel, Bally Mac Wild and Glengar Bale. Like you've got four absolutely fantastically fast greyhounds there. Anyway, lads, we're going to have to wrap it up. George, the derby winner, what's it up? Um, going to go new in Taylor wide, stay out of trouble, let them have it among themselves inside new in Taylor. Tommy, you haven't changed your mind since last week? No, heart and head, Pastana. Pastana. Listen, folks, it's been a great derby thus far, and it will only get better. We've got two brilliant semi finals at Shelburne Park on Saturday night. Don't forget, though, via the, um, via the Barking Buzz app, you can also watch the action from the Dave Collins Memorial, Munster Oaks of Waterford, and of course, the final of the Emerald Isle Casino, Cambridgeshire at Limerick. A great weekend's racing um, to look forward to, but of course, the feature very much the semi finals of the Boyle Sports Champion Stakes. Join us next week for more Talking Derby. <laughs>